probably either an AGM or a lithium iron phosphate, but there's probably a bit more than that you should know about the different types of batteries. I'm Sam Moser, and this is another video in my van build series. Right now, I'm on a bit of a roll with the sub-series on the electrical system. There are two main types of batteries here, lead acid and lithium based batteries. Within each of those, there are specific types, and we'll go over that. Lead acid batteries have been around for a long time, and you'll find one of these under the hood of most cars as the starter battery, but their applications go way beyond this. Lithium batteries are a much newer technology, and they've really taken over in terms of powering all our gadgets like our phones, our laptops, power tools, cameras. They have a much higher energy density, meaning that they store more energy in a smaller and lighter package. Much lighter, as we'll see. So in this video, I'll give an overview of lead acid and lithium batteries, I'll discuss the details and benefits of each type, and I'll do a comparison where I look at a couple specific batteries comparing the cost and lifetime and a few other specs. Let's talk about lead acid batteries first. In general, compared to lithium, lead acid batteries are cheaper, but they're also bigger and heavier. They also have a much shorter lifespan. So even though the upfront cost of lead acid is lower, they may not end up being cheaper in the long run. Battery lifespan is measured by the number of charge discharge cycles a battery is capable of going through before the storage capacity of a battery becomes too degraded. Lifespan is also referred to as cycle life. The cycle life of lead acid batteries varies with the different types, but for an AGM battery, it's often only about 600 cycles. Lithium batteries, on the other hand, will last for thousands of cycles. Among the different types of lead acid batteries, you'll see both deep cycle batteries and starter batteries. For use in your van or RV, it's important to only look at deep cycle batteries. These are meant for deep discharge and are designed differently than a starter battery is. Starter batteries are designed to provide a large amount of current very fast, but not to be discharged deeply. They should only be used in applications that have that special requirement, such as starting the engine of a car. Deep cycling a starter battery will reduce its performance, shorten its lifespan, or may cause it to fail entirely. Now when we talk about deep discharge for a deep cycle lead acid battery, this really only means discharging it 50% of the way. Discharging past this point will reduce the lifespan of the battery. The important takeaway from this is that the usable capacity of a deep cycle lead acid battery is actually only 50% of the rated capacity. So for example, a 100 amp hour battery should really, be, should really only be discharged to 50 amp hours before being charged again. In general, the shallower the depth of regular discharge is, the more cycles you'll get out of a battery. If you size your battery a little bigger, such that you usually only discharge it 30% of the way instead of all the way down to that 50, it's going to last a lot more cycles. Now back to the different types of lead acid batteries. There are three main types, flooded, AGM, and gel. There are various terms that are used to refer to these and it can get a little bit confusing. Flooded batteries are also called wet cell or unsealed. AGM and gel batteries are sealed batteries and you might also hear them referred to as dry cell or VRLA, and that stands for valve regulated lead acid. Flooded batteries are the cheapest and longest lasting type of lead acid battery, but they require regular maintenance. They are maintained by adding distilled water as the battery dries out, and in general, they should be checked about once a month. They are also referred to as unsealed because they literally are unsealed and they must be kept upright or the liquid electrolyte, aka battery acid, will leak out. They must be well ventilated as well because they release hydrogen gas when charging. So, due to the potential for spilling and the need for ventilation, you probably don't want to put a flooded battery inside your van. But for a stationary or off-grid solar project, they might be a cost-effective option. Now the sealed batteries, AGM and gel. These don't require regular maintenance as the electrolyte is sealed inside, and there's enough of it inside for the battery to last for a given number of cycles. Because of this, they won't spill fluid if tilted or put in a non-upright position. Under normal conditions, these won't release any gas either, but no lead acid battery is truly sealed. These still have safety valves which will release gas, but only in the case of them being overcharged or if there's a cell failure. 
This is where the term valve regulated lead acid comes from. AGM stands for absorbent glass mat, and it's the most popular kind of sealed battery. The electrolyte in these is suspended in a thin fiberglass mat located between lead plates. These are very vibration resistant and they're great for mobile applications. They can also handle a high charge and discharge rate, which is the big downfall of gel batteries. AGM batteries work great for vans or campers, and this is the kind of battery I used in my van. With gel batteries, the electrolyte is gelified by adding silica. Gel batteries usually cost more than AGM, but the benefit is that they have a higher lifespan. They'll last for more charge discharge cycles. The downside to gel is that they are the most sensitive of the lead acid batteries, and charging or discharging them too fast will damage them. They can withstand really hot temperatures though, and are really only the best choice for some very specific circumstances, and use in a van or camper isn't one of those. I did come across some information online about a newer type of lead acid battery, and that's an AGM gel hybrid battery. The construction of them is basically just like it sounds, a hybrid between a gel and an AGM battery. And the idea is that they're gonna provide the best characteristics of both. High current can be drawn like an AGM, but with a higher cycle count like gel. When searching online though, I didn't really see that many of these are being sold, especially compared to the regular types. And it's hard to tell if they've really been proven out yet. But in the future, these might be another good option, and that's why I thought it was worth mentioning here. I want to give a couple more notes about lead acid batteries, and then I'll move on to lithium. As far as temperature, the operating range is pretty good for lead acid and should be fine for what a van sees. The only thing you don't want to do is charge them if the battery is frozen. The freezing point of a lead acid battery actually varies depending on the state of charge. The higher the state of charge, the lower the freezing point. Unless you travel to some extremely cold conditions and leave your van for an extended period of time without any heat, you probably won't have to worry about your lead acid battery freezing. But when in those colder temperatures, try to keep the state of charge higher. Always check the exact specs of a battery before purchasing them. Next, lead acid will charge quickly to about 80% state of charge. But then after that, they're slow and require lots of power for the remainder of the charge. They aren't the most efficient at charging. Charging efficiency is a measure of how much of the power supplied during charging is stored and available for discharge. Lead acid batteries are about 80 to 85% efficient at charging. Another interesting thing about lead acid batteries is that the battery capacity is dependent on the rate of discharge. The faster or higher current you discharge the battery with, the lower the capacity is. The battery capacity listed by the manufacturer is for a defined discharge rate. It's often a 20 hour rate. This means that the battery will have that capacity if it's discharged over the course of 20 hours, but the actual capacity will be less if it gets discharged faster. The battery should have a data sheet which gives a chart showing this exactly. Lithium batteries don't behave like this. Their capacity remains just about the same regardless of the discharge rate. Let's turn to lithium batteries now. In many ways, they are a nicer choice. The really big advantage of them is their small size and lightweight compared to lead acid batteries. They are a little more sensitive though and need a battery management system to make sure the voltage, current, and temperature are staying in the proper ranges. The battery management system, also referred to as BMS, is usually built into the battery itself. Unlike lead acid batteries, which should only be discharged 50%, Lithium batteries can be discharged to 100% depth of discharge. They charge efficiently and can be charged or discharged with high currents. There are a couple different types of lithium batteries, lithium ion and lithium iron phosphate. Lithium ion batteries are what you'll find in a phone or tablet and in even bigger things like the Tesla Powerwall. Lithium ion batteries heat up when they charge and because of this they need very safe battery management systems. They can become flammable or explosive even if they overheat or get damaged. Remember a certain phone a few years back? Lithium iron phosphate is a newer compound, which is more chemically stable and doesn't heat up when charging. This makes it safer, and it also gives it a longer life. If you go with a lithium battery for your van, lithium iron phosphate is what you want. Cycle life for lithium batteries also depends on the depth of discharge. 
Batteries from different manufacturers have different cycle lives, but for one example, the battery we'll compare in the next part is rated at close to 4,000 cycles at 100% depth of discharge. This is on the higher end though, so some will have less than this. It's usually still in the thousands though. If you size your battery so the regular depth of discharge is 80% or less though, the cycle count really gets high. Lithium batteries charge quickly and efficiently, with an efficiency of 95% or more. Their charge rate can also be quite high, allowing them to charge very quickly when needed. You do need to watch out for cold temperatures with lithium batteries. Most can't be charged below freezing or 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Some can though, just at a reduced current rate. As I mentioned before, I used an AGM battery in my van. In particular, I used a 200 amp hour AGM from Renogy. I think this is a good battery and a reputable brand. Now what I want to do is compare it side by side against the lithium battery. Let's look at the 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate from Relyon. As far as batteries go, this seems to be a pretty nice one. And as I mentioned before, its cycle count is going to be on the high side. Since you can discharge the lithium battery fully, the 100 amp hour gives you about the same usable capacity as the 200 amp hour AGM. Here are the dimensions of each. The lithium is quite a bit smaller and occupies less than half the volume of the AGM. The weight is the really crazy part. The AGM is almost 100 pounds more than the lithium, 128 pounds versus 30 pounds. Here is the cycle life versus depth of discharge chart from the datasheet of the AGM battery. In another place, the Renogy site rated this battery at 600 cycles, but from this chart, it looks like we can be a little more generous and say 700 cycles. This lithium battery is rated at just under 4,000 cycles for a 100% depth of discharge. Let's call it 3,500. For both of these, notice how the number of cycles increases if you don't discharge as deeply. Putting the price and cycle life together, we get a cost per cycle of about 51 cents for the AGM and 30 cents for the lithium. In the long run, the lithium actually is the cheaper storage option on a per cycle base, but it's gonna take quite a long time before you see a payoff. By quite a long time, I mean quite a few years, really. If your battery goes through one charge, discharge cycle, and I think this is a typical case for a van in travel, then 700 cycles is gonna be nearly two years of use. Hopefully though, you're also sizing your battery such that you aren't going all the way down to 50% discharge every day. That means you're gonna actually get quite a few more cycles out of that battery. That's all I got for this one. Thanks for watching. The next video is going to be about how to calculate what size battery you need based on what you're putting in the van. See you later. Bye.